all welcome back to Dave's Techway today in today's video we're going to be uh, taking my system that I built before and we're going to be transferring it over into a new home that new home is going to be this here Cooler Master uh, HAF XB Evo case and going inside of it we have a one terabyte there, one terabyte Seagate Barracudas 7200 RPM and we're going to have the Intel 730 series 240 gig SSD for the boot. We got the Gigabyte FX 990 UD3 R5 motherboard with the I/O plate there. The CPU here, it's the 73. Oh, what is it? That's the 8370 AMD FX processor. Back there we have the Cooler Master and uh, the Cooler Master Evo 212 and all the components needed for it. And right there for the graphics card we got the Sapphire R9380X. Over here we have the Rose Rail 40 in 1 card reader. That's for reading my memory card from my camera. Powering the system. It's going to be the Corsair RM650 power supply. We have 16 gigs of HyperX Fury memory. We're running 1866 speeds. Uh, back there is my Wi-Fi cord that I need. And some of the tools that you need is going to be a number two Phillips, preferably magnets at the magnetized tip. I also have a six inch extension number two. I also have wire cutters for the uh, for the zip ties when I do my wire management. My little tool that came with the Evo 212 cooler for the back nuts. And my thermal paste. You have to have thermal paste to keep that CPU cool, guys. Um, let me get reset up and we'll get into the build. Alright, guys, we're going to start out with prepping the motherboard here. First thing we're going to do is open up the clam packaging. Get your CPU out. This clamp here, make sure it's opened up all the way. Your CPU will have a little gold triangle on it. There'll be a triangle up here in this corner of the motherboard. Make sure they line up. Set it right down into the holes, just like so. Clamp her down. CPU's installed. Next, we're going to do the Evo 212. It comes with its own back plate. So if you're doing a new build, you'll have to take off the uh, retention heat sink brackets that come on the AMD boards. Flip your motherboard over. Line up the holes with the green parts of the back plate touching the board. You take your little thumbnail here, little thumb screw. You put it through the board. And you put your nut on it. If you use AMD or Intel, you'll have four of these. Alright guys, once you have all four of your standoffs in, through to your back plate and grab a hold of one of the little nipples. Take your tool that is provided by Cooler Master for this. Put them on the back. Just give them a little torque. You don't need a whole lot. Make sure you hit all four of them. Depending on your build, it is going to depend on which standoffs you use and whatnot. So make sure you check the Cooler Master Evo 212 box to make sure you're using the right hardware for your build. Um, AMD will use different standoffs than what the Intel builds do. Just make sure you double check and make sure you're using the right stuff and you got your back plate on right. Alright, now since that's all done up, we're going to get ready to put the cooler on. And to do that, you have to have thermal paste. The thermal paste I'm using today is just some cheap stuff I bought from my local, local electronics store. And it will do. Uh, if you buy the Cooler Master Evo 212, it will come with its own. There's a lot of theories on how to do this. A lot of people put just a pea-sized drop. Me, I like to spread mine out. 
opinion may vary on this. And since you got your thermal paste in there, next we want to take this the clip for the Evo 212, the hold down bracket, and we're going to put it in there the way it needs to be orientated. Spread them out. Set the heat sink down onto your CPU with the thermal paste on it, how you decided to put it on. Line up your four screw holes. You get them started. Once you get all four of them, once you get all four of them started, this is why I like my six inch extension bit because of these high air coolers. You want to do these when you're tightening these down, just do a couple of turns on each one, cross kind of cross corner them. But you're keeping the pressure nice and nice and even on your CPU, between the CPU and the cooler itself. And you just go back and forth corner to corner until they all get down to be snug. Uh, until you feel comfortable or until they stop either way. Alright guys, once you have that tightened down, take your fan. Make sure your fan cable is facing the way towards your uh, CPU fan header. Line it up. Push it on. Clip your little clips in the side. And right there's your fan header, guys, with your four pin fan header. Got the little notches. Slides right down on. Sometimes it clicks, sometimes it don't. And that that is your CPU cooler installed. Now for the RAM. You notice it's got a notch in it right here. You got a notch in your uh, dim slots down here. If you got four dim slots and only two sticks of the RAM like I do, check your motherboard see which one's your dual channel. And set them down into the RAM slots. With the notches lined up, push down one side, push down the other side, and repeat it with the second dim. Alright guys, so next step is going to be to prep the case. And to do that, we're going to start out with the power supply. Take off the four thumb screws here in the back. Take this back uh, power supply bracket off. Once you have the bracket removed from the case, you slide over top of your PSU. And you put in the four screws in the four corners. Once you have all four of them started, take your screwdriver and tighten them down. This is just putting the PSU into the bracket. Once you have your PSU and your back and your plate together, you run your cable screw into the case. And using the four thumb screws you took out, you put the bracket back into the case, guys. Alright guys, once you have all four of them started, just take your screwdriver and give them Tighten them down the rest of the way with the screwdriver, just like so, on all four of them. Alright guys, next thing we're going to do here is the uh, hard drive installation in the end of this case, which is pretty simple with the three and a half inch drive. Make sure your power connectors are facing out away from the inside of the case. And that's because inside the case, I don't think there's going to be enough room to do the cable management. On the other side of the hard drives, so you put the two little sleds on them. You slide them in until it locks. That's it. Now for your SSD, you have to take and screw it into this little caddy here. You line up the holes with the SSD with the holes in the caddy. And you take put four screws in it. That's why magnet tip screwdriver comes into play. It's nice for this kind of stuff, for this little stuff. Take and store it in there. You put all four of them in the same way. Once you get it screwed in there, it ain't gonna go no place. Take your sleds, just like you did your three and a half inch drive. Put them on the side of the caddy here. Put the little metal prongs inside the holes. On both sides of the caddy. Slide it in until it clicks. Once it clicks, it ain't gonna be going that place. And that's the installation of the hard drives. Alright guys, while we're doing the drives, we're gonna go ahead and I ain't it's actually ain't a drive, but I am gonna be putting in my 40 in 1 Rosewell card reader here. 
then you take the plate off the front, lift it off, run my cable back inside, reach over here on the side, hit the open position, and slide it in. Should lock into place. It's still a little loose. Once you slide it in there, yours, if you're using a DVD CD drive, you won't have as much play. I do because it's the card reader. Right here below the locking mechanism is a place for two screws. Below the locking me mechanism is room for two screws. Because this don't because the locking mechanism don't lock this very good, I'm gonna go ahead and put two screws into it to make sure it's nice and secure. That way you don't move around when I'm pushing my memory cord in and out of it. Alright guys, next thing we're going to do, I pulled the motherboard tray out of this case. For to make this a little bit easier on me, we're going to put the motherboard standoffs and attach the motherboard to the tray. First thing you want to do is set it down here and line it up and see which holes need your standoffs. As you can tell, this has already got two standoffs on it. But your ATX motherboard is a total of nine. So you're going to have to match them up. See which holes you have to add to. Take them off. Cool master adds this little, this little tool here. It's metal. It fits right on top of the uh, standoffs. Unfortunately, the standoffs ain't metal. They're copper. So they, so they ain't magnetizable. But then you just go around, you figure out your holes, and you put your motherboard standoffs into your tray or into your case, whichever. If you don't have a removable motherboard tray, you'll have to do it while they're still in the case. Once you get them all started onto your motherboard tray or inside your case, you just want to take your little tool here go around and tighten them down. They don't have to be real tight but you want them snug that way if you go to remove your motherboard they ain't going back out with the screws to your motherboard. Just like so. And you want to test fit your motherboard again. And make sure you're right that every one of your holes has got a standoff underneath of it. which I do. You dig out nine of the little screws that fits in your standoffs. How do you know they fit? You dry test them. And it don't matter which order you do these in. Just get them started and you put them all in. I like going around and just getting them started at the beginning. That way I know I ain't been bending the motherboard and breaking any of the traces inside of it. Alright guys, once you get them all started, you just go any place and you start tightening them down. You just want, to, want these snug, you ain't sealing against water or air. So you just snug them down, you just try and hold the motherboard in place. And that's either your motherboard installed or that's your motherboard installed into your motherboard back plate, whichever way your case is set up. Alright guys, now we're going to be installing the I.O. shield for the motherboard. You find your I.O. shield cut out. Your audio ports usually go towards the bottom of the case since this is uh, since this is a cube case they will be going to the right as you're looking at it down towards the expansion slots. You slip it into the hole and push it in on all four corners. Alright guys, that takes us down to just needing the uh, network adapter cord and the graphics cord installed. So let's get this thing done up. We're going to pull the back plates off here that we need. I've already lined them up off the camera so I know exactly which three I need to pull out. I need one for my Wi-Fi card and two for my graphics card here. And these screws was pretty tight. I had to use a screwdriver to loosen them up. Maybe they're the thumb screws. You know how companies like to tighten them things down all the way. Since your Wi-Fi card is only a one slot one, one times X. We're going to put that right up here on the top one like we had it in the last build. And it just slides down in. And you put your screw back in it just to support it. Alright, now for the graphics cord, we're just going to make sure the clip's back here. Going to line it up in the slot. 
and we're going to show it now. And you should hear a nice satisfying click when it goes in. And just like the uh, Wi-Fi cord, this one here is going to have two screws instead of one. It's the only difference. You put the two screws back in there. I like to try to hold mine up toward the CPU as much as possible to stop it from sagging. Tighten down the screws. Front, front connector down here. That's going to have your HD audio, your power switch, your reset switch, and your lights. You have to check the manual or the motherboard to see which one connects where, and you could click them up and uh, connect them the way they're supposed to be connected. And guys, next we're going to be hooking up our system fans. Two fans in the front of the case. And here's the system fan two. It's going to slip right down on. Just like so. Alright guys, it's time for the 24 pin connector onto the motherboard. It's the only connector that looks like this from the power supply. And 24 connector on the board. Make sure your clip's facing in the right direction. Clip it down on. Should be able to give a little tug. Should be alright. Next is your 8 pin CPU. Make sure your clip's facing in the right direction. Should only fit one way. Clips down on there just like the 24 pin did. Since I got my cord reader, it's a USB plug. There's the plug in for it. Right there's a USB 2 header for it. It only plugs in one way. Line up the pins. And push it down on there. USB 3, looks like that. There's the port for it. It only goes on one way because it is keyed. Slips right down on there. It's for your USB 3 port header on the front of the case. Front port audio, it says F audio right there on the motherboard. There's the connector off your front porch. It also has a AC97 wire, which no modern computer uses AC97 anymore, so you can clip it off or do you like me? I'll put a zip tie on it just to hold it back out of my way. And our graphics card needs power to it. Takes two six pins. The cable says PCIe. Make sure the clips is facing away from the video card, at least on this model. And you push them down on. Just like so. There you go. That pretty well completes the uh, build video for the Cooler Master HAV uh, XB Evo. I hope you learned a thing or two from this video. I'm glad you made it through and you stuck through the whole video for me. Uh, I know my audio ain't very good. I got a new solution in order. Just wait for it to come in. But anyways. I changed the format up in this video a little bit from my last uh, build, my last build video, to be able to shorten it down and uh, just more or less hit the points that's really needed. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Give me a thumbs down if you dislike the video. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about my videos and what I'm doing here on the channel. Until next time, you guys be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.